Okay, so we're, we're coming up to the final segments of uh, the ballonary history. Uh, I might find some other things, but I think I've pretty much brought out what I've found and what I remember and what I know. Um, even though this is a little bit out of sequence as far as the um, dissolve of the business, which I've already covered, uh, this is September 19, 1994. So, kind of the heyday of, of uh, Dad's ownership. Like I said, he did, he did um, run it throughout 95 as well. But uh, I got this fax at work in the afternoon, just kind of out of the blue. What's it say here? Uh, 3.23 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 6.23 uh, Ontario time. And uh, it took me a little bit while to receive this fax because the fax machine was not um, super close to my office. And uh, so I can't remember whether I found it in my mail slot or I found it on the machine or what, but it would have been an hour or two after this. Um, I think it was same day. That's kind of within an hour of the end of the day, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I saw it that day. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, Scott may need crew to fly the 120, that's the uh, 120,000 square uh, cubic foot balloon in India. And you can tell he's excited about this. Early mid-November, four days, four flights over New Delhi. Plus, seven-day balloon safari over the countryside. You, me, Roger, Peter Tilney, which I guess is another uh, balloon pilot, and videographer. Combined balloon documentary TVO City. So he, he may have already been talking to somebody over at uh, CFTO. Or, uh, no, uh, TV Ontario. Maybe look at adding a few days to end to go to Nepal, Kathmandu, and the foothills of Himalayas, and possibly Tibet. Um, interested? Of course I'm interested. Any holidays or chance to leave for two weeks. So anyway, I see this. I can tell Dad's excited about it. That's a you know a major life-changing kind of uh, affair. And uh, I was all for it. After I received this fax, probably the following weekend, I would have phoned Dad and uh, we chatted about it. He told me a little bit more about what's going on. There was, I don't know if he was a prince, but there was some kind of well-to-do Indian gentleman who just loves hot air balloons, and he kind of invites as many balloons as he can get. He loves those huge takeoffs that have, you know, whatever, dozens or, or 100 balloons or whatever. Um, and I have to admit, I've never seen that in person. I've never seen a huge balloon um, gathering of uh, balloons like that, so I, I thought it would be pretty exciting. And I've always wanted to go to India. At the time, in particular, I was quite interested in Buddhism. And so his idea of uh, perhaps going to uh, Nepal and uh, if we, if, you know, potentially in Tibet, well, shit, that's that's right up my fucking alley. Uh, it still would be. Um, as long as someone else is paying for it, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. Not only did I give that serious thought, but I basically told him if that continues to be um, a thing, then uh, I'll, you know, it was only two months away-ish. He was saying it was mid-November and it was already 19th of uh, September. So I, I think I probably talked to David a little bit and said, hey, you know, what do you think? And uh, David was supportive, if I recall, and said, yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a great thing to do. Um, but within a couple of weeks... This happened, and that is that uh, there was a outbreak of the plague in uh, essentially, I would call it Western India, um, Surat. So that's north of Mumbai. That's absolutely nowhere near where we were going. Um, and as this document here specifies, the uh, WHO was not recommending... Uh, uh, complete travel bans to India, knowing uh, what kind of economic and, and uh, you know impact that would have. Uh, however, uh, Canada was one of many countries who who banned travel to India outright during this time. It wasn't just the uh, pneumonic plague 
but actually like the bubonic plague, like, uh, both at the same time as I understand it. So, I mean, that's the, you know, that's the age-old Black Death going on there. Now, if Canada hadn't um, stopped all travel to India, we probably still would have went. Uh, New Delhi is... I can't tell by the map right here. I could probably get Google to tell me, but, uh, well, it's it's probably 1,500 miles or 2,000 miles uh, northeast of Surat. So definitely nowhere near the outbreak area. And, uh, yeah, I have a feeling that there would not be, uh, you know, there would not be issues where we intended to be. Um, but it was enough to shut down the whole uh, program, and, and uh, quite quickly we had to just let that let that concept go. Um, so anyway, for a short period, um, Dad and I were both uh, completely and utterly excited by the idea of traveling halfway around the world to uh, fly the balloon, and that would that would have been completely awesome. But as things turn out, you know, Murphy uh, gets in the way and. Next thing you know, you're fucked. So anyway, as I mentioned, uh, there might be one or two pieces or uh, there's a couple of uh, leads I'm following up on to see whether there's anything left in the whole balloonery experience thing there. But I think that this uh, segment of uh, the YouTube channel is, is kind of come to a close. So that's it for the balloonery right now. Um, thanks for watching. And we'll talk soon. And uh, until next time, bye.